In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Remix, the new React framework that was just released this morning by Michael Jackson and Ryan Florence. You probably know Michael and Ryan from the things that they've done in the React community, things like React Router, Reach UI, and they also run React Training, among other things. And typically, the stuff that they do is really awesome, so I was really excited to kind of see this come out. Also, I've heard a lot of hype about it. So the second that it came out, I bought a license, I downloaded a new project, cloned a new project, played around with it, and in this video, I kind of want to walk you through how that looks, how Remix looks, what the dashboard looks like, how you create a project, how to do basic stuff like routing and data fetching. And I hope by the end of this quick video, you'll kind of get a really good understanding about what Remix is and how it works. Now, um, if you're interested in Remix, I think this is the video for you, so I hope you enjoy. And if you're not already, subscribe to my channel. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll go to their documentation at remix.run. Now, once you've created an account, bought your license, you can sign in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And it'll allow me to sign in with GitHub. And once we're signed in, it will redirect us to this dashboard. And in this dashboard, we see that we have our license key. And this is what you basically need in order to download the files necessary to kind of run your app. So you're gonna clone a project without any, any node modules. In order for your NPM install to work, you need to have this license key configured in your NPM RC, which is what we're gonna do in just a second. You also see that you have uh, documentation. You know, this is still kind of new at, at, the, at this recording. So you'll notice that some of this documentation isn't even uh, written out yet, but there are placeholders for it to kind of give you an idea of what's coming. Uh, there's also a support tab where you can go to things like their Discord, an email address, a link to their Twitter, and whatever Remix discusses. I'm not sure what this is. So I guess this um, some GitHub repo that you have to be a member of. Uh, maybe I can get access to it now that I have an account. And then the billing link will take you, you know, outside of, of Remix into your billing dashboard, I believe, for Stripe or whatever payment processor they, they chose to kind of set up. So what I'm going to do, though, is go to documentation, and I'm going to go ahead and click on installation. And installation is going to kind of walk us through how to get up and running. So let's go ahead and build something. So what I'm going to do is just follow these directions. So I'm going to go ahead and clone the starter project. And anyone can actually do this. You don't have to kind of be a um, customer yet just to do this. You can actually just Google their uh, Remix GitHub. It's github.com slash Remix Run. And this is the starter project that we're kind of starting off with, the Remix Starter Express. So we'll go ahead and clone that. And we'll change into the new app directory. And if we try to run Yarn, we're going to see that we have um, an, a warning saying no license field and basically, you know, we're getting an error. So we can't really um, install until we configure our project. So let's go ahead and open up the project in our text editor. And what we should see is that we have this npmrc.example. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this file. And what we basically need to do is set our license key here. So I can go back into the dashboard, copy my license key, go back into my code, paste it in, and then I should be able to go ahead, let me go ahead and close this, should be able to go ahead and run yarn or npm install, and, and this you know should work now. So while that's installing, let's go back to the docs and kind of keep going. So what we're going to do is basically, um, you know, we've already done this. We've configured our NPM RC. And you're going to see that there's a couple of different ways to start your development server. When you run NPM start, it's basically going to start up two different processes. We can also start these processes manually ourselves in two separate windows by running remix run in one and nodemon server.js in the other. But um, what we're going to do is we're just going to use npm start. So let's go ahead and just try that out. And we should see that our app is loaded on localhost 3000. And there we go. This is kind of the hello world of Remix. Uh, the first thing that we'll notice is we have this message from the loader. Now, this is actually very Remix specific. Um, it has this idea of data loaders. 
Data loaders can happen dynamically. Uh, so you can call some a uh, other API and fetch some data. They can be static data. It can come from a JSON file. It doesn't really matter. And you have this idea of router-based data. You also have this idea of global data. So what we're basically looking at here is router data. So this, this data is uh, available specifically to this route, but we can also set up um, some global data. So let's go ahead and kind of look at how this is working. First of all, let's look at how the data became available there. And we can see that we have this loaders folder and then loaders we have routes. We also have app slash routes. And this kind of correlates between the routes and the loaders. So if we go to routes slash index, we see that we have, we're returning this object with a message property of this is awesome. And then if we go to our index.js, we see that we're importing this use route data hook here. We're destructuring or we're, we're actually uh, retrieving the data variable off of the use route data hook. And then we're saying message from the loader is equal to data.message. So the message property is coming directly off of this loader where we're setting the message property there. Now there's also global data. So if we go to global.ts, we see that we have uh, an object that we're returning right now. We have a date. But let's say we wanted to set some global variable here. This might be a good place to do stuff like user authorization, setting um, session information uh, about a signed in user or something like that. But for this example, let's set a version. And here we're gonna set a version of V2. Um, and then what we can do now is we can go into um, any of our files and we can now use the use global data hook. And I might say const global data is equal to use global data. And then I might say something like version is equal to global data dot version. And then we should be able to go ahead and save and refresh and see that we have that global variable available. So this is pretty interesting, but I think the real meat and potatoes from any React or web framework is kind of the combination of routing and data fetching. And actually the data fetching and routing story for Remix is actually pretty different and pretty cool. So let's go ahead and look at how we might build out a very popular use case. Um, typically a lot of apps have this idea of a list view and then a detail view. So you go and you fetch an array of items, you, you kind of show those items to the user and then the user clicks on the item and then you're kind of drilling down and viewing that individual item. Think about stuff like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all of these are kind of you know general versions of that. So let's go ahead and implement something like that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the Star Wars API to do that because that's kind of a really you know easy and free API to work with and it's pretty nice to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and create a new, a new route called people.js. And here we're gonna go ahead and import React. We're gonna go ahead and uh, export a default function for people. This is gonna return a header that says Star Wars characters. So just by doing this, we should be able to navigate to slash people and kind of see this route in action. So if I go to slash people, we see that we now have Star Wars characters. So that was pretty easy. Uh, the next thing we might want to do is add some navigation so we can kind of navigate between the two different pages. So to do that, we'll open app.tsx. We'll import link from React Router DOM. And React Router DOM ships with Remix, so we don't really have to do anything to make that work. And here we might do something like link to and then we might have a slash people. So let's go ahead and refresh. And now we can navigate between the two, the two pages. So what we wanna do is set up a data loader though for people so we can fetch an array of people. So to do that, we're gonna go and we're gonna create a route within our loader that maps to people. So we're gonna say people.js and we're gonna say module.exports equals function. And what we wanna basically do is uh, fetch the Star Wars API. And what we're gonna say is 
return fetch. And we're going to pass in the URL for the Star Wars API. So if I go to this Star Wars API, we see that this returns this data structure here where we have a count, a next, a previous, results, all this stuff. So what we're expecting is this is going to be available in our component. Now you might be asking, why aren't we doing like async await? We're not saying we want to return the response to JSON. Well, this is actually a cool part of Remix. You don't really have to do any of that. You just kind of return whatever you'd like and Remix will automatically return the JSON or whatever data is available there. But you also have a lot more control over kind of how the headers are set here. So you can do stuff like caching and things like that as well. But for this example, we're kind of making it basic. All we want to do is kind of return this data into our page. So I can now use this route data so I'm going to go ahead and import uh, use route data. From remix run react. I'm also going to import the link component from react router dom. And let's go ahead and say we want to go ahead and get the data off of our route data, and we're gonna log this out. Let's go ahead and refresh our page and see if this works. When the page reloads, we should now see that we have our data, and this data is now available in our component, so we can now use this and the way we're going to do is we're going to basically map over this results array and kind of show a link to go to a new page for every single one of those items. It's kind of like as a drill down. So we might say something like data.results.items.map. And we might just use something like key is equal to index. And we want to go ahead and link. And with the place that we want to link is going to be a new route that we have not yet created. So um, the, the route parameter is going to look something like this. We're going to say slash person slash index plus one. And the reason we're using the plus one is because the um, the way that the Star Wars API works is if you go to slash people slash one, you'll get you'll get something. But if you go to slash people slash zero, the zero index isn't there. So we're kind of bumping up the index from zero to one. The next thing we might want to do here is have like an H2 where we have the item dot name which is really the person.name. So maybe we could change this to like person to make this a little more readable. And um, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try that out actually. Let's go ahead and refresh and see if this works. So we go to slash people and can't read map of undefined. So let's go ahead and see what's going on with that. Data dot results. I'm um, looking for data.results.items.map. It should just be data.results.map. Okay, so now we're mapping over the items in our array, and we see that we have a list of items here. So next, what we want to do is we want to link to this, this individual person, and we've created a route called slash person, but we haven't actually created that, that, that uh, route yet. So under routes, we're going to go ahead and create a new folder called person. And then in this folder, we're going to create a new file called id.js. And this is going to be kind of how we're going to be dynamically creating um, different um, routes for whatever items that we're going to be rendering. Now, id.js is going to look something like this. Um, we're going to import use route data from Remix uh, Run. We're going to use the use route data hook to get the user. And then we're just going to render the user's name their home world, and the user's height. This is going to be basically a person, so we could have used person. But essentially, this is kind of like you know an individual Star Wars character. Now, though, the way that we need to think about this is like, uh, how are we mapping that, that route 
um, loader to each individual page. So the way that we did it before is we just made a individual like global fetch call where we didn't really have any variables. We we're just calling some API, return some data. In this example though, we need to actually have a variable. And the variable that we're gonna be using is that route parameter. So what Remix is gonna allow us to do is basically get the route parameter out of the um, argument for the loader. So if we go to loaders slash routes, create a new folder called person. And then we create a new file called id.js. You'll notice that this maps directly to our regular file path. And what we're basically doing here is we're gonna say, we wanna fetch the Star Wars API, and then we want the params.id. So the ID is kind of how we're defining this, um, this endpoint, essentially. And the ID is going to basically then call Star Wars API slash two or something like that. And then we're going to get this, this return value. And then we want to make this available, you know, in our, in our route. So we're just returning it. And then whenever we want to access it, we just use the use route data. So, um, it should be all wired up now. So let's go ahead and uh, cross our fingers and hope that this works. We're gonna go to people. So we click on a character. We see that we have the dynamic data there. Go back to people, click on another character. We see that we have all of that information there. So um, that's kind of the intro for a remix that I wanna go over. I also encourage you to maybe check out my blog post. I created a blog post called uh, First Look at Remix.run that kind of goes into a little more depth about how Remix works and how different things um, are different, I guess, about Remix. So I appreciate you checking this out. Um, if you like this video, subscribe to my other videos. So subscribe to my channel and um, check out some of my other videos. And I appreciate you checking this out.